السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين Once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. InshaAllah ta'ala, we're starting our study of uh, Surah Al Kawthar in this series, and it's a pleasure to be here in Richardson this week, alhamdulillah. As many of you know, we'll be doing this every first month, every first week of the month, first Tuesday of every month, the other three sessions still in the Irving Masjid, inshaAllah ta'ala. Part of the uh, sort of tradition of these durus is that we take a moment in the beginning to comprehensively discuss an introduction to each surah. And because Surah Al-Kawthar is so heavy, it's one of the shortest surahs of Qur'an and also at the same time it's a very heavy surah in terms of its content, its message, and its wisdom. Most likely I will not be able to accomplish a complete dars of the surah today. We're probably going to end up exhausting ourselves in the introduction and then perhaps some discussion of the first ayah, bi'idhnillah ta'ala. So I want to begin with a really well-written introduction written by Dr. Fadl Salih Hassan al-Ra'i. Uh, who's a renowned author and scholar of Quranic studies. He writes, Surah Al-Makkiyah, هِيَ مِنْ أَعْظَمِ السُّورَ الَّتِي تُظْهِرُ نِعَمَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ عَلَىٰ, رسول, على رَسُولِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَفَضْلِهِ الْعَظِيمِ It is a Meccan surah, and it's from the, one of the greatest surahs of the Quran in which the favors of Allah are manifest upon His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم and his incredible preference given to him. In other words, this is the surah, if one is to study how does Allah show preference, and honor his messenger والسلام, this is one of the greatest surahs to study in that context by no means is it the only surah but certainly one of the greatest of them and also this surah is dedicated to mentioning what Allah gave to him in abundance not only in this world but also in the next in the ayah inna a'tainak al kawthar roughly translated, no doubt we have given you the abundant good. That's how it's commonly translated. But we'll look, take a more a deeper look at it later on. وَكَمَا فِي سَابِقِ السُّورَ الَّتِي فِيهَا إِخْبَارْ بِالنِّعَمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ تَأْتِي نِهَايَةَ السُّورَةِ بِالدَّعْوَةِ لِلشُّكْرِ وَعِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ And this is a very important concept that he mentions. He says this is consistent with previous surahs in which Allah also mentions His favors, that those surahs also conclude with a, with a call to either show gratitude to Allah or to do ibadah to Him. When Allah Azza wa mentions His favors, then at the end, He mentions that you should be grateful to Him. For example, you know the famous surah, Allah Azza wa says, أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَىٰ وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَىٰ وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَىٰ But then at the end of that surah also, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ So it's a, it's a call and invitation made to show gratitude to Allah Azza wa And this is consistent in this surah also, because in this surah there's a call to ibadah made right after the gift. Inna a'tayna al kawthar is the gift. And then what's the call? Fasalli li rabbik. Pray to your master. And pray only for the sake of your master. Waqad khutimat is surah bidhammi i'da'i al rasul. And the surah concludes with a condemnation of the enemies of the Prophet. Wa bayani annahum humul maktu'una min kulli khayrin fi dunya wal akhira. And it elaborates that they are in fact the ones that are going to be cut off completely from every every good in this world and the next. What ayah is he talking about? In Nashani Aka, who al Abdar he's talking about that ayah. Amma Rasulu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqad a'la Allahu ta'ala dhikrahu fi dunya wa a'tahu fi dunya wa akhira. As for the messenger who is concerned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah has elevated him in terms of his mention in this world and has granted him in in this world and the next ma huwa ahlun lahu وَاسْمُهُ ذِكْرَهُ خَالِدٌ إِلَىٰ آخِرِ الزَّمَانِ إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْتَرِ And he is given to him what he is uh, worthy of. And so in this surah, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in regards to his enemy, إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْتَرِ لِأَنَّ الْمَعْنَ الْأَبْتَرِ الْمَقْطُوعُ مِنْ كُلِّ خَيْرٍ That the meaning of abtar in the ayah is the one who is cut off from any form of good. There is no good at all left in this person. And inshallah ta'ala we'll see why this language is very very strong when we get to that ayah. You know there is the word batr. Batir also, batir also. There's different, you know, morphological forms of that word. 
But this, you know, this is afdal tafdil in morphology. This is called insarf. This is the, the it's, a, it's a very strong form of the noun that is used, abtar. And there's a reason that's used, and we'll, when we get to the ayah, we'll study that, inshallah ta'ala, in more detail. In regards to the study of coherence of surahs, we study the relationship of the previous surah with the next one. And in regards to that study, there's a few, con- a few observations we're going to make. Actually, I'll, I'll go straight to the commentary of uh, Fakhruddin al-Razi, rahimahullah. في السورة المتقدمة متقدمة وصف الله تعالى المنافق بأمور أربعة. He says that in the previous surah and what's the previous surah? Surah Al-Ma'un. Surah Al-Ma'un. Allah Azza wa Jal attributes gives us four attributes or depicts four things about the hypocrite. Among other comments that we made in Surah Al-Ma'un, one of the things we learned about Surah Al-Ma'un is the at the hypocritical behavior. And he says that there are four major hypocritical acts or attitudes that were highlighted in Surah Al-Ma'un. Awwaluha, the first one, Al-Bukhl. Wahuwa al-murad min qawlihi yadu'u al-yateem wa la yahuddu ala ta'am al-miskeen. The first of them is miserliness, being cheap, you know, and being, you know, greedy. And so greedy that you're willing to push the orphan around and not even talk about giving to the poor. We talked about this last week. Why, Allah didn't say that he doesn't give to the poor. Wa la yut'imu al-miskeen. He didn't say that. He said, wa la yahuddu this is different. Doesn't even encourage. Doesn't even you know bring it up. Why not? Because if he brings it up and he's wealthy and he's encouraging people to give to the poor, the poor the people are going to say, well, what about you? What are you doing? And he he figures, hey, if I don't bring it up, nobody will bring it up to me. So he doesn't even you know talk about it to begin with. And this is the ex- the extreme state of miserliness. He will see poverty around him, and he's in a position to say something because the previous surah was talking to leaders of Quraysh. They're in a position to say something, but they're not going to open their mouth because it makes them look bad. Because people will say, well, you're the one saying it, why don't you begin with it? You should be the first to do it. Anyhow, so the first attribute of hypocrisy is al-bukhl. The second, wathani, tarku salah wa huwa al-murad min qawlihi. And the second is the abandonment of prayer. And where is that in the previous surah? Al-ladhina hum an salatihim sahun. In that ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the second attribute. Sahwa literally means to forget something when it's not that important to you. So they really abandon the prayer for things they think are more important. You know, Allah Azza wa Jal didn't say, الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ تَارِكُونَ He didn't say that they're, you know, they're tariku, they're, they're sahun. And uh, sahwa again, they don't care for, it's not a big deal. You know, لَا يُبَالِي أَمْ صَلَّى أَمْ لَمْ يُصَلِّي It wouldn't make a difference if he prayed or didn't pray, it wouldn't matter to him. Not a big deal. And other descriptions that we talked about last week were also, wait till the very end of salat time is about to be over, and then make salat, right? Or even if he misses the salat, it's not, you know, who cares? That sort of attitude. May Allah Azza wa Jalla protect us from that attitude. وَالثَّالِثْ الْمُرَاءَاتِ فِي الصَّلَةِ وَهُوَ الْمُرَادْ مِنْ قَوْلِهِ And the third attribute, now keep in mind what's the sequence. The first one was to, um, to be cheap, and the second one was to be heedless, and to abandon the prayer carelessly. And the third one now, showing off in matters of salah, where does he say that? الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاؤُونَ This is the third attribute. They, they're the ones who show off. When they pray, they're not praying for Allah, they're praying to show off. وَالرَّابِعَ الْمَنْعَ مِنَ الزَّكَاةِ وَهُوَ الْمُرَادْ مِنْ قَوْلِهِ And the fourth is giving even the smallest acts of charity, the, more, the bare minimum acts of charity. And this is interesting. In some works of classical Islamic scholarship, they don't use the word sadaqah, they use the word zakat. And it's not just referring to the legal term zakat, the 2.5%, but they actually use it because that's the, that's the least someone is supposed to give. They would be a criminal if they didn't give that much. So that's how it's used. The least bit of charity. That's what zakat, in that context it's used. And of course, what ayah talks about there, them not even being even to be willing to give even the least bit, it's وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَعُونَ That ayah is talking about that, that, that final bit that they're not even willing to give that which is mandatory upon them. Because literally the word ma'un in Arabic means the item which you're not supposed to refuse ever. It's not just money or things. It's, you know, a shay la yumna minhu. You know, there's something that you don't forbid someone from giving. Somebody asks you for a glass of water, you're not going to be cheap about it. Right? You don't, just, you don't turn it away from them. But they even do that much. They, they, and this wasn't even part of the deen. This is even before Islam. The word ma'un was understood in this way. You just don't turn people away from certain things. But they would even do that much. These four attributes. Now let's see how he connects those four attributes to the contents of this surah. ذكر في هذه السورة في مقابلة تلك الصفات الأربعة صفات الأربعة. He says that in comparison and contrast to these four attributes, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions four other attributes in this surah. And let's see what they are. فذكر في مقابلة البخل 
And in, in contrast to being miserly and cheap, what did he mention in contrast in this surah? Inna a'tayna kal kawthar. We have given you the abundant good. So the contrast of being cheap is giving. And who's giving here? Allah Azza wa Jal. And here he adds the commentary, فَأَعْطِي أَنْتَ الْكَثِيرُ وَلَا تَبْخَلُ He says, if Allah is giving so much, then the, it's only natural that you should now give more. And this is something we learned in the previous two surahs. In Surah Quraysh, Allah told us what He gave Quraysh. And when you are given a lot, then you should give a lot yourself. If you're given a lot, you should give out yourself. You see the same thing happens with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger himself was an orphan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ يَتِيمًا But now that he's taken care of, what is he supposed to do? فَأَمَّ الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ Immediately it comes after. You know, now that he's been given, he should take care. So Surah Quraysh, Allah gave Quraysh. So what are they supposed to do? They should give now to others because they're taken care of. Their food is taken care of summer and winter and they're in complete safety. And their food supplies are taken care of. Alladhi at'amahum min ju'in. They've got enough to eat. So they should be ones who give. But what does the next surah tell us? Al-ma'un. They don't give. They don't give what they're supposed to. So by Allah saying, Inna a'tainaka al-kawthar, one of the implications of that is to give. If Allah has given you so much, then the very least you should do is that you should give. وَذَكَرَ فِي مُقَابَلَةِ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ And in contrast to mentioning, in the previous surah he mentioned the people who don't care about salah. And what does this surah say? فَصَلِّ فِعِلْ أَمْر Pray then. And what is this pray? أَيْ دُمْ عَلَى الصَّلَاةِ Be constant in the prayer. When Allah commands, now don't take it carelessly. Because you know, it's not just, you know, salah is a good thing, salah has benefits. Allah is commanding to the salah. When he's commanding to it, he's, he's, he's expecting from us consistency. Problem? Better? Okay. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So that's the second. وَذَكَرَ فِي مُقَابَلَتْ الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاؤُونَ And the third. Now remember there were four problems he listed in the previous surah. Being cheap, and then being careless about salah, even abandoning it. The third, showing off in salah. Now he's going to talk about the third one. And in contrast to the third one, الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاؤُونَ They're the ones who show off. قَوْلُهُ لِرَبِّكَ لِرَبِّكَ You know, in, in contrast to that, he says, not just pray, but pray for the sake of your master. In other words, your intention should only be for Allah Azza wa Jalla, and should, they should not be addressed to anybody else. So now here, this is the matter of ikhlas. As opposed to there, the problem was a lack of ikhlas. You're not doing it for Allah, you're doing it to show off. Then finally, وَذَكَرَ فِي مُقَابَلَةِ وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَعُونَ And in contrast to mentioning that they forbid even the smallest favor, that they don't give what they're supposed to. Allah Azza wa Jal here says, وَنْحَرْ And sacrifice. First of all, sacrificing an animal requires you to spend money. Because animals aren't free, so it requires to spend money. And when you sacrifice the animal, part of the meat is supposed to be given in what? Charity. The, the act in and of itself includes at tasadduq you know. So the one who gives the sacrifice necessarily is giving sadaqah after they're done. So that's what he mentions, وَأَرَادَ بِهِ التَّصَدُّقْ بِلَحْمِ الْأَضَاحِ By that Allah Azza wa Jal alludes to or intends to talk about the sadaqah that is to be given from the flesh of the slaughtered animal. فَاعْتُبِرَ هَذِهِ الْمُنَاسَبَةِ الْعَجِبَةِ Then this strange and beautiful correlation between the two lessons of these two surahs is appreciated. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْتَرِ That your, Allah at the end of that surah talks about the enemy, right? The, the, the enemy of the Prophet والسلام, who will be discontinued. And the previous surah is dedicated to the acts of the one whose mention should be discontinued from the beginning to the end. أَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي يُكَذِّبُ بِالدِّينِ فَذَلِكَ الْيَدْعُ الْيَتِيمِ All of these descrip- descriptions are the descriptions of the person who is Al-Abtar. They are descriptions of it. So there's a connection between these two things. Now, this, uh, uh, inshallah ta'ala, what we're going further into is, we're going to dedicate ourselves in appreciating just some lessons from the first ayah. And I'm not going to go in order of the words. We'll come to the words later on. I'm going to start from the word al-kawthar itself. Al-kawthar itself. And al-kawthar, uh, inshallah ta'ala, later on in the lesson today, we'll look at the linguistic meaning of al-kawthar, what, what it comes from, what its implications are. But for now, we'll just say it means the abundant good, the great good. The great good, al khair al kathir, like many of the salaf say. And inshallah ta'ala, as we go through these notes, we're going to find why is it that al kawthar includes so many things. Many of you have heard that when Allah Azza wa says, We have given you, meaning the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al kawthar, you know, huwa al hawd fil jannah, it's the river in paradise. 
Also, الحوض في الموقف It's also the river in the, in the place that we have to stop before we head off to paradise Meaning on the day of resurrection, the believers will have a place where they can drink Right by the Messenger ﷺ. So it's referring to two things. A, a bank of water available to us before we enter paradise and even after we enter paradise. There's two of them and they're both included in Al-Kawthar. According to several, several, several athar and narration that are found in classical works of tafsir. But we're going to begin from a different point of view. And at the end we'll see how there is no contradiction. In, our, in the traditional narrations of classical scholars, we'll find that Al-Kawthar describing this great good, they didn't limit it to the discussion of just the river in paradise and the river before we enter paradise or the, these, these banks of water the, there's talk of a lot of other goods so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with one of the most famous lists made of the goods one of the tafsir in this regard for example uh, a tafsir al-kabir uh, in, in it Fakhuddin Imam, uh, Imam Razi he, what he does is he makes a list of some favors Allah has given him just in some of the previous surahs he just makes a list of them and I'm going to just share with you some, some of this list so you can appreciate what kind of reflection these ulama used to make when they studied Qur'an. Let's start. He says, first Allah said, مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Allah Azza wa Jal says to his messenger that he did not abandon him. He didn't say goodbye to him. تَوْدِيعَ You know, وِدَاعَ In order to say, الْوِدَاعَ Right? It's Arabic word. تَوْدِيعَ He didn't say goodbye to you and he's not displeased. And even in that ayah, there's a gift to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Arabic expectation is مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَاكَ There are two, ka, the, the kaf, the pronoun is expected twice. The English translation would have been, he didn't say goodbye to you and he is not displeased with you. But with goodbye, the Messenger is mentioned, but with displeasure, the Messenger's name is not mentioned. And that's a gift of Allah to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's out of love. Because the word goodbye doesn't have any negative connotations. But the word displeasure clearly does. And Allah does not mention the name of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa next to that negative word. Even in that ayah, there's a gift. And of course, the lesson of the ayah, that Allah is not going to be one to ever abandon His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then He says, وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى Another gift to the Messenger. No doubt about it, what is at the end is better for you than what is in the beginning. What an amazing gift to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then on top of that, وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ you know, in this surah, inna a'tainaka, we've given you, and he describes what he's given us, given him as al kawthar But there, what does he say? Wala sofa yu'ti karabuka. He doesn't mention al kawthar He just says, no doubt about it. I swear, very soon your master will give you a lot. He will give you. He will grant you. Fatarda. And how do you quantify how much will he give? You know, when you give, to, when you give a gift to someone, you say, I'm going to give you something. What are you going to give me? How much? What's it worth? Right? Now how do, you put a, how do you put a value to it? Allah Azza wa Jal puts a value to it for His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, فَتَرْضَى I'll give you so much that you'll be happy. You'll be pleased. So the quantity is described as, it'll be so much and it, you won't, it won't stop until you say enough. Until you say, I'm pleased. And the Messenger Sallallahu look at his love for this Ummah. He said that I won't be pleased until all of my Ummah is saved from the hellfire. This is the love he has for us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then Allah Azza wa Jal, His other favors that are part of this Al-Kawthar, أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَى We mentioned this ayah before. Didn't He find you an orphan and gave you shelter? وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًّا فَهَدَى In that ayah, when we studied this ayah a few months ago, you know, dal is not translated here as lost or misguided. It's translated as seeking. Is understood as seeking. The one who can't find his way and is desperately looking. He, can, he found you in a state where you were desperately looking and he gave you guidance. What bigger gift is, than that? Then, وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى And he found you in desperate financial need and he made you free of need. Then he says, أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدْرَكَ صلى الله عليه وسلم. Did we open your chest for you? And what an opening of the chest that the Qur'an can fit in it. The Qur'an that wouldn't fit inside a mountain Right? And it would explode. That Qur'an fits in the heart of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the, the, in addition, the, the, the pressure one would feel that when the ayat would be revealed, we know the, the narrations. Camels, if he was sitting on a camel, the camel would sit down. It would sink into the sand. You know, the Sahabi's knee, the, the Messenger's knee is on top of the Sahabi's knee one time. Right? And the ayat start coming down and the Sahabi narrates, my, my, I felt like my knee was about to shatter. Allah says, إِنَّا سَنُلْقِي عَلَيْكَ قَوْلًا ثَقِيلًا We're going to make you come into contact with a very heavy word. And it was literally heavy when revelation used to come. 
but the messenger's chest is open so he can receive it. What an amazing gift. What's uh, is part of Al Khair Al Kathir. Then wa wada'na anka wizrak, we removed your burden from you. Al Ladi Anqada Dahrak, the one that was breaking your back. Wa rafa'na laka dhikrak. What a gift of Allah here. We elevated your mention for you. You know, and this rafa' is it's understood in two ways. You know, there's in Arabic you can and like in any other language, you can look at something literally and figuratively, right? So when you say we elevated his mention, it means besaut, meaning we made his mention go out loud, and that's actually true in every adhan that happens across the world. Not a minute goes by that somebody's not reciting Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi and everybody who hears it says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it's being elevated, his mention is being elevated like nobody else's. Name any other human being, any other human being that is mentioned in this way constantly. Constantly. And instead of the mention going down over time, what happens? It goes up over time. It doesn't go down over time, it increases. Subhanallah. And Allah says, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ So this is, and, and your mention, right? And Allah Azza wa gave us so many incentives in the Qur'an to remember and send, send praises upon the Prophet wasallam that the believer is constantly looking for opportunities to do so. Allah Himself says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي Allah Himself and His angels. You know in Arabic, you don't typically mention the noun first, you mention the verb first. You know, so it's Yusalli Allahu wal Malaikatu ala Nabi. That's the expected format. Jumla fi'liya is the expected format of the sentence. There Allah says, In Allah wa Malaikatahu Yusalluna ala Nabi. You know what that means? Imagine even Allah. <laughs> No doubt about it. Allah and His messengers, they're sending salawat upon His messenger, upon the Prophet ﷺ. Then, Ya أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Now realize, Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Right? Allah didn't just say, begin, Ya أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا They didn't begin like that. So many ayat in Qur'an begin with, Ya أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Just like that straight. But before he gets to that topic, what does he come to? You better realize, what I'm telling you to do is something I do myself and my angels. How, his, how will the messengers mention not be elevated? وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ This is part of the good that Allah has given His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم أَنَّهُ أَقْسَمَ بِبَلَدٍ You know Allah mentioned, Allah swore by the city and when Allah swears by something, one of the meanings of that is it's been honored and one of the things Allah swore by is the city in which the Prophet is born صلى الله عليه وسلم you know, وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينَ He swore by that city and by the way Allah Azza wa Jalla swears very, very few times, you know, by, by anything other than some of His magnificent creations. But in the Quran, in the Quran, you know, that other than these other creations, there is no human being that has ever been sworn. Allah doesn't swear by another human being, except the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. La umruk, la umruk. Allah swears by His Messenger. I swear by your life. And the only other, other than these inanimate, inanimate objects, you know, Allah Azza wa Jalla swears by, you know, animals, al-adiyat. Horses, winds, the sky, the sun, but he also swears by himself, his own self, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bala wa rabbika la yu'minun. You know, wa rabbik. This is him swearing by himself. And even when he swears by himself, first of all, appreciate this. What's the difference between Allah swearing by a creation and then Allah swearing by himself? Isn't there a huge difference? In, even in importance, we would just, we can't imagine. First of all, when Allah swears by anything, it's important. And now he's swearing by who? Himself. And even when he swears by himself, he doesn't just mention himself. Next to it, he mentions his messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He doesn't say, "Warabbi samawati wal ard, warabbi al alamin, warabbi him." No. Warabbi malaika. No. What does he say? Warabbi ka, ya Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I swear, I swear by the your master. Even when he swears by himself, he honors his messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is part of the al khair al kathir. Al kawthar hu al khairu al kathir. You know that abundant good is that is that enormously plentiful good that has been granted to the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then he even mentions that Allah granted his messenger so much that he even gave the the, the rewards that he was giving him, the rewards that are given to the messenger. Wa inna laka la ajran ghayra mamnoon. Wa inna laka la ajran ghayra mamnoon. You have a reward that can't even be quantified. It cannot have any breaks on it, any limits on it. This is something Allah says, especially to His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and He loves His Messenger so much, He even gave that to the believers. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ He gave them that too. 
out of the love of his messenger as he comments sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah Azza wa Jal honors his messenger with even the beginning of revelation. Even that was an honor. Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. And in that same surah, anyone, anyone who calls against the messenger, who intimidates him, who tries to bully him, this is a reference to Abu Jahl. فَلْيَدْعُ نَادِيَةِ Let him call his posse. Let him call his gang. سَنَدْعُ الزَّبَانِيَةِ We'll bring in our SWAT team also. And Zabaniya literally means police, you know, security. <laughs> and Allah says, we'll bring in our security detail. Let him call his posse. What does he got? Allah comes to the aid, the defense of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. أَنَّهُ خَصَّهُ بِالْقُرْبَةِ التَّامَّةِ And Allah specified His Messenger with a special kind of closeness. A kind of closeness never given to anybody else. With what words? وَاسْجُدْ وَاقْتَرِبْ Make sajda and come close. He was specifically to the Messenger wasallam. These are from the gifts Allah has given him. Then he says, إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَاكَ هَذِهِ الْمَنَاقِبِ Now after quoting all these ayat, what does he say? إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَاكَ هَذِهِ الْمَنَاقِبِ الْمُتَكَاثِرَةِ الْمَذْكُورَةِ فِي السُّورَةِ الْمُتَقَدِّمَةِ فِي السُّورِهِ الْمُتَقَدِّمَةِ الَّتِي كُلَّ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْهَا Now listen to this. I, that, it is as though Allah is saying, I give you all of these gifts in the surahs that have been revealed before in the Quran, or you find in these ayat in the Quran, and each and every single one of them, أَعْظَمُ مِنْ مُلْكِ الدُّنْيَا بِحَذَافِيرِهَا It is more valuable than the entire treasures and sovereignty of the world combined with all of its, its assets and its, its wealth. فَاشْتَغِلْ أَنْتَ بِعِبَادَةِ هَذَا الرَّبِ Then you remain busy in the slavery and servitude and, and worship of this master. Subhanallah. That's, he says, he connects this to فَصَلِّ رَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ now we come to the ayat and a little bit of a word analysis. We'll, to, we'll go word by word by word and look at some of the other aspects of khayr and then combine the, st the, the statements of previous scholars with what we just studied uh, under tafsir Razi. Inna a'tainaka al kawthar. A'ta yu'ti i'ta. First verb in the ayah. I'ta. There's another word in Arabic, a'ta, to give. Then there's a'ta. And a'ta is also commonly translated as to give. Then there's another word, wahaba. Wahaba. Like Rabbana Hablana. Well, sometimes we say Rabbana Atina, right? We say Atina, give us. And sometimes we say Rabbana Hablana, grant us, give us. Also giving. So there's Wahab, there's Ita, there's I'ta. What's the difference between these words? Hiba in Arabic or Wahaba is to give a gift. And it's not just a small gift, it's a huge gift. So when we ask Allah to give us tranquility from our spouses and our children, then that's a big gift. That's not something small. If someone can be happy with their spouses and their children, then they're very, very fortunate. Because the vast majority of people who live in a household are not happy in the household. So when they can enjoy that, that's not a small gift, that's a big gift, right? So hablana, min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yunin. This is in Surah Al-Furqan. Ita in Arabic, to give, is actually to give, but it's not absolute. In other words, you are giving something, but it comes with responsibilities, or you're giving something that you can't take back. For example, تُؤْتِلْ مُلْكَ مَنْ Right? تُؤْتِلْ مُلْكَ مَنْ But also, تَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِنْ مَنْ You can give it to whoever you want, and you can take it away from whoever you want. Is it possible? The same one Allah gave it to, He can take it away from the same one also? Yes, it is. This is ita. Either it's something that's given that can be taken away. That's one implication. And the other, it's something that's given that comes with responsibility. For example, آتينا, We gave them the book. Allah gave the book. Does the book come with responsibility? It does. It does. So when giving is associated with some responsibility, or it's something that can be taken back, then in these scenarios, ita is used. But i'ta, it has several implications. One of them is that, you know, in Arabic, words have root letters. And sometimes the sequence of the root letters is shuffled, and the meanings are connected. For example, shukr and shirk have, you know, contradictory meanings, but they're similar in their spelling. You know, husn and nahs have different root letters, they're sequenced differently, but they're connected in their meaning, they contrast each other. This is a feature of classical Arabic. There's i'ta, which is, the root letters are ayn, ta, and waw. Ain, ta, and waw. But then there's tawwa, ta, waw, and ain. It's a different sequence of letters. From it we get the word ita'a, which means to obey, to follow, right? Or to, to, to listen carefully to. You know the word i'ta, to give actually means when you give someone, when you're so happy with them because of their obedience. That's one of the meanings of i'ta, from ita'a. Because of the ita'a, you give i'ta. 
In other words, when Allah says, أَعْطَيْنَاكَ Allah is pleased with the way the Messenger follows the commandments of Allah. And as a result of His pleasure, He is giving. And this is not a giving that was expected. Very important. You know, sometimes you obey someone and then they give you, like your job. You obey your boss and then you get a paycheck at the end of the week. That's ajr. That's not i'ta. I'ta is, you did this because you didn't, ex- not with any expectation. And then out of the pleasure of the, the, the one who you did it for is so pleased with you, they give you without your expectation and beyond your expectation. This is one. Then i'ta is more grand. It's not used for small things, it's only used for big things. It's not a small thing, it's a very, very big thing. Then finally, the third, that i'ta, this word is actually considered a favor that cannot be compared with. And it's something that's not taken back. And something that doesn't come with strings that are attached. In other words, once it's given to you, enjoy. Enjoy. This is something for you to enjoy. There are no strings attached with it. So when Allah Azza wa says, Al-Kawthar, enjoy these gifts. Enjoy these gifts. And these are not gifts that I will take away from you. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are parts of, parts of the meanings of i'ta. Then as far as the, the, the tense of the word is concerned, أَعْطَيْنَا Allah didn't say, inna sanu'ti. Like in another ayah we find, inna sanulqi alayka qawlan thaqila. Sanulqi, that's the present future. That's actually the future tense. We will soon give you. But here he says, inna a'tina, no doubt we already gave you. Past tense. Now the way we think of past tense in ancient Arabic, in the Qur'an's Arabic, and the Arabic of those times, and the way we think of past tense in English, or in Spanish, or in German, they're different. There are some differences. I'm going to list those differences. Obviously you already know the difference between past tense and present tense. But then why is something, why is the past tense being used for one, and a few of these gifts, Allah hasn't even given His Messenger yet, like al hawd fi jannah Even though the Messenger in one hadith says, Wallahi la anduru ilayha, I, I, can, I swear by Allah, I can see it. I swear by Allah, I can see it. He told His companions, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, and we'll look at that narration too. But nonetheless, this is something in the future. So why use the past tense to talk about something in the future? This is a legitimate question. The ancient Arabs would talk about something, you know, they, would, they had certain philosophies associated with tenses. The past is for sure. Yesterday was guaranteed. But tomorrow is not guaranteed. Right? So the guarantees are associated with the past. And, you know, uncertainty is associated with the future. If you want to talk about something in the future that is super guaranteed, super, there's no doubt about it. It's guaranteed it's going to happen. Then you talk, and you're so sure about it, then you talk about it in the past tense, because the past tense is used to describe that which is guaranteed. It is as though you're saying, it is as sure as yesterday. It is as, so, as sure as yesterday. Okay? You know, the, the way they say uh, in English expression, as sure as the sun rising tomorrow. But actually, we don't use that in Islam, because we're not sure if the sun's rising tomorrow. But there is a certainty associated with the past. So this is one of the rhetorical benefits of a'tayna. Allah is guaranteeing it as guaranteed as that, you know, actually there is an English expression that captures it. You know how they say, done deal? Right? I'll see you next week. And you say, done, done. It's not done. It's going to be done next week. (laughs) But you're saying, even psychologically, it is as guaranteed as it already happened. It's already done. Don't worry about it. Finished. It's not finished. But you're saying finished. You know? So this is, this is the rhetorical, first rhetorical benefit. The second rhetorical benefit of using the past tense is the, is the form of completion. In other words, in Arabic, present tenses are used to describe something that's not done yet. In other words, if I say, أَتَعَلَّمُ الْعَرَبِيَ uh, I learn Arabic. I learn Arabic. You know what that implies? I, have, I haven't finished learning yet. It's not done yet. It's still going on. But if I say to you, I learned Arabic. You know what that signifies? It's done. It's complete. As far as Allah is concerned, the favor is guaranteed and the favor is also complete. And the favor is also complete. There's not, it's not going to be shortchanged. Both implications are present in just the tense that Allah Azza wa Jal used in inna a'tainaka. Now we come to the word, I'm skipping inna for later on inshaAllah ta'ala. Now we come to the word kawthar. By the way, salah here is 8.30, right? So we'll, we'll wrap it up about maybe seven minutes before salah and then reconvene right after salah, inshaAllah. Anyhow, now we come to the word kawthar. Kawthar from a morphology, from a sarf point of view, belongs to the Arabic pattern fawal. Fawal. And this word, this pattern is used for, is one of the siyah, one of the patterns of what's called in English hyperbole. And in Arabic we call it siyatul mubalagha. 
Mubalagha. Now, I, I know I've talked about this before, but I want to, this is a newer audience, so I want to make sure you guys understand. We have to get better at English too sometimes. There's a difference between saying you hyperbolized your statement. I know a lot of you don't know what that means. I'll explain it. You hyperbolized your statement as opposed to saying you exaggerated your statement. There's a difference between hyperbolizing and exaggerating. Hyperbole means to say something in a very powerful way, in a very strong way. Exaggeration means to go beyond the truth and enter the realm of falsehood. So exaggeration is actually, you didn't exactly speak the truth. But if you hyperbolized, you were very excited, but you didn't go overboard. In other words, you didn't leave truth and enter into falsehood. I'll give you an example. Some, you know, two kids got in a fight in the parking lot, let's just say, right? And we're getting different versions of it. Some kid walks in, there's a fight in the parking lot, a really bad one. Okay, this is hyperbole, because it's true. Even though he's excited and he elevated the speech, and he made it seem like a big deal, there's truth in it. But somebody, some other kid walks in, oh my God, one of them's going to be in the hospital, it's going to be so, and they're going on and on and on. No, no, he just slapped him, he didn't do anything else. No hospitals are involved. This is considered what now? Exaggeration. The Quran does not have what? There's no exaggeration, but there is a lot of what? Hyperbole. There's a lot of mubalagha, there's a lot of hyperbole, but there's no exaggeration. Because the Quran, you know, qawluhu al-haqq, his word is true. It's the truth. So there's no such thing as exaggeration in the Qur'an. Sometimes because of a lack of sensitivity even to English language, a lot of times a speaker or a translator even might end up saying, oh, this is the exaggerated form. Or this is an exaggerated, it's not an exaggeration. It's a hyperbolize. That's the word to use. To empower a word in its meaning. To give a word steroids as we say nowadays, right? To give it juice. To give it strength. To muscle it up. That's what that means. Anyhow, now this word al-kawthar. It doesn't, it comes from the word kathir or kathra. Kathra means to have plenty. Kathir is an adjective. Al-Kawthar is incredible, incredible amounts of something. Lots and lots and lots and lots. Then you don't call it Kathir, you call it Kawthar. Allah says, I have given you lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. And I can't I can keep adding because it's Kawthar. Kawthar has a wow in it. Kathir has a ya in it. In Arabic rhetoric, in Balagha, the wow is stronger than the ya. So if Allah said kathir, it would be a lot still, but Allah said kawthar, making it even more. The word kathir in and of itself means a lot, but Allah made that word a lot times another lot, because of the wow in al-kawthar, subhanallah. This is to describe what Allah has given His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa again al-khayr al-kathir, fa'al min al-kathra. Similarly, al-Qurtubi comments, al-nawfal min al-nafl, other words that are hyperbolized in the same way, al-jawhar min al-jahr. وَالْعَرَبْ تُسَمِّي كُلَّ شَيْءٍ كَثِيرٍ فِي الْعَدَدِ وَالْقَدْرِ وَالْخِطْرِ كَوْثَرًا And the Arabs used to mention, talk about anything that is a lot in terms of its quantity, a lot in terms of its value, a lot in terms of you having to want to protect it and guard it. Those kinds of words, they used to call them كَوْثَر. Something that was, there was a lot of it, and it was very, very valuable, then they would use that word. فَالْكَوْثَرْ هُوَ بِالْإِضَافَةِ إِلَى الْكَثْرَةِ الْمُفَرَّطَ فَهُوَ الْخِ this is also important. When you say a lot of something, is it possible it's a lot of good things or a lot of bad things or a lot of mixed? It's possible. Because when you say a lot, I gave, I gave you a lot. Right? Or I taught you a lot. Maybe I taught you a lot of good things and also in there some bad things. The word kathir can be used for good and bad things. But the word kawthar can only be used for good things. It's, it's, it's mutakhassis or mutakhassas rather. It's specialized and specifically used only in context of that which is good. This is part of the perfection of the ayah. That Allah said, Inna a'tainak al kawthar. In other words, everything Allah has given him is incredibly good. And He's given him a lot of it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. عَرَفَ al kawthar bit ta'rif. This is also important. There's an al on it. Inna a'tainak al kawthar. Al kawthar. Now, one of, the, one of the features of Arabic is when you say, Inna a'tainak kawtharan. Kawtharan, that can refer to many different things. But if you put al on something, one of the implications of that is it's only referring to one thing. So some have argued because this is al kawthar, it's only referring to the river in paradise and nothing else. And the proof of that is the al. They're saying that the al is proof that it can only be referring to one thing, and that one thing can only be what we find in the athar, which is al hawd fil jannah or al hawd fil mawqif. Right? That, that can, that's the only thing it can be referring to. But وَلَوْ قَالَ كَوْثَلْ لَمَّا دَخَلَ النَّهَرْ فِيهِ لَكِنَّ الْحَذْفِ الْمَوْصُوفِ This is the comment. 
لكن حذف الموصوف أفاد الإطلاق وجمع كل خير. When you refer in Arabic to something with an adjective, you know how in English we have nouns and adjectives, right? When you talk about the adjective but you don't mention the noun, right? Then that adjective could be referring to many things, even if it has al. Allah by saying the a lot, a lot, or a, you know a great many, plenty. Are these words nouns or adjectives? Plenty, lots. These are adjectives. And if because the, the Allah used an adjective and didn't quantify a noun, didn't specify what noun is it an adjective of? Al hawd al kathir, al hawd al kawthar. He didn't mention the noun. By not mentioning the noun, it opens the scope and the acceptability of other possibilities in the ayah. And this is part of the grand gift giving of Allah Azza wa Jal that He didn't limit the gift that He gave to His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Just give you a couple more references in, as far as the linguistics of the word kawthar. In the old, there's a poetry about the old woman in Arabic uh, uh, history who, you know, her son went to travel. And the Arab son would go to travel to, you know, go and trade and bring back wealth. So he comes back and the, the mother is asked, Bima ab abnuk, what did your son bring? What did he come back with? And what does she respond? Bi kawtharin. He came back with? Kawthar. Ay, meaning, bi malin kathir. He came back with a lot of wealth. He, he made good money on that trip. So she's first of all delighted because her son is back and she's really happy because he came back loaded, right? So that's, that, that's where the word kawthar is used even before Islam. وأنت, this is the shi'ad. And you are a lot, you are very good in terms of your good character, Ibn Marwan. So the poet is praising a guy named Ibn Marwan. But then he says, your dad was awesome. You're okay, but your dad, man, he was, he was just awesome. So what does he say about him? وَكَانَ أَبُوكَ إِبْنُ الْعَقَائِلِ كَوْثَرًا But your dad, Ibn al-Aqail, that guy was kawthar. You're tayyib, you're good. But that guy, he was amazed, he was kawthar. So what he's saying is, you should be more like your dad. You, I'm impressed, but I'm not that impressed. You know, and the way he does that, he compares the word tayyib with the word kawthar. Meaning he was really very, very, very good. The final comment, inshallah ta'ala, in regards to uh, al kawthar actually we'll do two more things, we have time. Uh, I think I can pull them in there, inshallah. The word inna. The word inna. We didn't do that. We did a'taynaka. We did al kawthar But we didn't do inna. This inna in Arabic is actually grammatically, even if you don't say it, the sentence is complete. You can say a'taynaka al kawthar We gave you al kawthar It's a still a complete sentence. And the word we is already there because at the word of a'tay, you have the na. That's the fa'il. That's the, that's the word we. It's already there. But we say inna. That's a we, na at the end. A'tayna, that's another we. Now if you literally translate, certainly we, comma, we gave you al kawthar This is the literal translation. And this is actually what the Arabs are meaning by it. Now let me give you some context. When does somebody mention themselves twice in terms of an act that they did? For example, you, you know, there's, a, there's an argument or something. I... I paid for it. You understand what I just did? Me, I hired you. I said my, I mentioned myself twice. Why? This is a means by which I am reminding someone of something they can clearly forget. This is one one thing. Second, this is a case of ihtimam. It's called in Arabic to highlight something, to give importance to something. And here Allah Azza wa Jalla is giving importance to the giving. I am the one who gave. I I gave. No doubt about it. The word inna is also important. You could, you could also say, نَحْنُ أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرِ But there's inna, the, 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 the harf al-tawqeed is there. The benefit of harf al-tawqeed is to remove doubt. This is by most accounts a Makki surah, even though there are respectable narrations, even in Muslim, even in Sahih Muslim, that this could be a Madani surah. But we'll reconcile those two by the end of this dars, inshaAllah ta'ala. How do we understand when there are multiple narrations? Some say the surah is Makki, others say the surah is Madani, especially such a short surah which we assume the whole surah came down at once, then how can there be differences of opinion about when the surah came down? We'll understand why those differences exist and how to reconcile those differences, inshallah ta'ala. This is a good opportunity to do that. This surah is a good opportunity to do that. But nonetheless, the, the word inna here, removing doubt. If you understand that this surah is makki, which is the ijma of the ummah by the way, the ijma pretty much is on the fact that it's makki. And that's how you'll find it ascribed in the mushaf also. 
then you understand that the Messenger والسلام, is dealing with a group of people that are very insulting and condescending and hurtful. And they're constantly making mention of what the Messenger doesn't have. What he doesn't have. Even at the end of this surah, you know Abu, Abu Lahab? He was the Prophet's neighbor. La'anahu Allah, he was the Prophet's neighbor. And the first son of the Prophet وسلم, Qasim radiallahu anhu, he passed away. There was still one son left. What's his name? Abdullah radiallahu anhu. Besides the four daughters, right? And these are all, you know, and, and, and uh, Abdullah is left. And then one day the news comes out that Abdullah radiallahu anhu has also passed away. And one of the first people to get the news, you know who it was? It was Abu Lahab. And he's happy like anything. You know, at the, what kind of disgusting person could be happy at the death of a child? Even your enemy, even your enemy, if their child dies, you get a soft corner in your heart. How filthy can this person be? How cut off from their humanity can they be? That he's celebrating this, he goes dancing out of his house, goes and announces it, oh Muhammad, his name is going to be cut off. Who, you know, Batara Muhammadun. His, his name is going to, his lineage is done, he's finished. No more sons for him. In other words, they would boast about what the Prophet doesn't have. They would also talk about the Prophet's lack of wealth, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They would talk about the Prophet's lack of backing. In other words, he's an orphan, right? How come this Quran wasn't given ala rajulim min al azim? How come it wasn't given to one of the leaders of the tribe of the two tribes? How come we have to listen to him? They would constantly make mention of what the Messenger doesn't have, and Allah begins the surah by saying, "No, don't worry about what you don't have. I've given you plenty." Uh, we, no doubt about it. Don't doubt it ever. Do not doubt it ever. And let no one who hears this ever doubt that you have been given more than they can ever imagine. al kawthar And we have granted it to you. No strings attached. And we've given you lots and lots and lots of it. Unimaginable amounts of it. Subhanallah. How the ayah contrasts what's in the beginning to what's at the end. And how it comes to the consolation of the Messenger wasallam. You know when somebody speaks in a bad way to you, then you need somebody to calm you down and say, it's okay, don't worry about it, you know, don't let it get to you. And, and, and even if you know those things, when you hear them from someone else, you say, yeah, you're right, man, uh, thanks. You help me calm down. Who comes to calm the messenger down? Who comes to the consolation of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa Allah does in the Qur'an. This is one of the gifts of Allah to the messenger. He comes to the aid of his messenger. Allah knows, subhanahu wa ta'ala, when his messenger is feeling sad, when he feels insulted, when he feels hurt by the words that they say, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُ يُضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ We know already that your chest becomes tight because of the things they say. You don't think the messenger's chest would become tight? Your child just dies and somebody's celebrating that? Somebody, I mean imagine that. I mean leave the fact aside that he's the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa any human being, that you would see somebody celebrating the death of your child. How much, how much kind of rage and pain would it cause you? And then after that, what does he have to do? He has to go and make da'wah to the same people and be patient with them. He can't go into battle with them. He doesn't do, not, not yet, no. Patiently make da'wah to them. وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ Be patient with what they're saying. We pass over those ayat so easily. Be patient with what they're saying. Can you realize what they're saying? Do you realize what, I mean imagine somebody said this kind of thing to you. You're, you'd lose it. You would lose it. You say, I, you know, he said, you don't know what he said. That's what you'll say. You'll act crazy. And when I try to stop you, you'll say, you don't know what he said, man. Well, we know what he said. <laughs> but look at the sunnah of this man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we call our messenger. What an amazing role model Allah has given us in terms of his patience. And what kind of heart it takes to make da'wah to people like that. To know that this despicable human being, and on top of that, he's family. And this tells you another lesson. The most hurtful words will come from where? <laughs> the family. Your, fam your own family can say the nastiest things because they know they can get it. It's all family, it's all good. They can say it and get away with it. Oh, what's the matter? He's getting under your skin? You know, and they'll keep poking, keep poking because it's all good in the hood. You know, it's all good. If somebody else said it to you outside, you break into a fight. Let your uncle go off on you all day. Right? So, like the, the messenger's uncle, no exception. Right? In this case, la'anahullah. Anyhow, let's finish this comment and we break for the salah. Yujad al-amran. In inna, in the ayah, there are two issues found. Al-ikhtisas, exclusivity, meaning it is only we who have given you kawthar. And since it is only we who has given it to you, the only one who can take it away is us. But since we gave you i'ta, not ita, we're never gonna take it away either. No one can take away from you what we have given you. They can take whatever, they think, they think they're taking something away from you. They've got nothing. 
They've got nothing. Inna a'tainaka. This is al ikhtisas The second is fal ihtimam. And Allah has given high importance to the giving that Allah gives His Messenger. This is called ihtimam. Hamma shay. Ahamma shay. He gave it importance. He gave it importance. So these, this gift that Allah has given His Messenger with, with this tawqeed on inna in the beginning is a, a special you know, privilege has been given to the Messenger wasallam. We just count from a language point of view how many ways Allah has magnified what He's giving His Messenger in just the first ayah. And we're just at a loss. And the gifts Allah gives His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Inshallah ta'ala after the break, immediately after Aisha, I'll try and wrap up the first session on Surah Al-Kawthar. I, again, I don't think we're going to finish Surah Al-Kawthar today, but I hope to finish at least the commentary on the first ayah. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyyakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.